Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Welcome to our weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Sheldon Jordan, artist, innovator, and neurological expert. Among various roles, Dr. Jordan serves as a clinical associate professor of neurology at UCLA and USC. And in his clinical practice in Santa Monica, California, he specializes in advanced imaging techniques, interventions for brain and nerve injury, anti-aging of the brain, and regenerative medicine. Dr. Jordan, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Dr. Jordan, you will be the chair of the upcoming Brain Health Summit, taking place June 26th and 27th. You personally underwent an experience that further highlighted the importance of solving Mm -hmm. neurological problems and restoring the body's ability to heal itself. Will you share a bit with us on this medical experience and how it impacted you as a clinician? Well, I've, uh, in my life, I've had many near-death experiences which have had a great influence uh, on me and the way I think about myself and my patients. Um, but uh, I, there's, there's one particular uh, episode which is uh, really emblematic of some of the things that have happened to me. So a couple of years ago, I was riding my motorcycle, uh, beautiful day, early morning, and um, I decided to go old school with my motorcycle. So I usually was, uh, was driving this really uh, kind of high-end motorcycle that had all kinds of bells and whistles. But here I took out of my garage this really old motorcycle that didn't have automatic braking control. And it was a very kind of old school, but kind of cute motorcycle. I'm, I'm riding along the ocean front, early morning. The, the streets are a little slick because it's early morning dew. And there's this little old man who's crossing the street on his walker. And he's kind of going along kind of slowly. And I figure I didn't really need to stop, but he's kind of in the crosswalk almost. So I'm gonna be a good citizen. And I scrunched down on my brakes. And this is where the old school came in being a problem is that it didn't have automatic braking control. So immediately everything locked up. I went into this horrible skid, slid 20 yards down the road and um, sheared off half of my helmet. Thank goodness I was wearing a whole helmet. Otherwise, today you'd be looking at one eye and a tooth. Uh, So uh, survived that, but I cracked 11 ribs, uh, fractured my clavicle, uh, fractured dislocation of my ankle. And as I I hit the ground and I was uh, skidding, I figured that, look, I'm I'm just gonna dust myself off. I'm gonna go to work. So I get up off the ground and I start to get up off the ground and I move my left foot and it's kind of moving normally. I move my right foot, it's just sort of like a rag doll. So I figured since I'm a doctor, I knew that I had fractured dislocated my ankle and thank goodness there were some, some runners going down the street who called the paramedics and they, and they took me to UCLA, which was, which was a problem. I asked them to take me to the, my local hospital but they took me to UCLA where all my students were. So you can imagine, I'm thinking that I'm gonna be in a bed and all my former students are gonna come into the room and gonna start laughing at me, which is of course what happened. So, so meanwhile, as I'm in bed, uh, uh, having gone through six hours of surgery to piece me back together and um, with all my former students coming in laughing at me, I'm thinking like, how do I get out of this mess? So I called up some of my colleagues and at the time, um, exosomes were being used. And exosomes are little packets of growth factors that you can derive from stem cells. And they can be purified and they can be given intravenously. So as soon as I got out of the hospital, I came to my office and I got a dose of uh, 50 billion exosomes intravenously. So I didn't know what was gonna happen, but I didn't wanna be in pain for multiple months, because after all, I had to get back to work. And uh, actually, four days after my six hour surgery, I was back at work, um, but it really hurt a lot. Like the rib, if anybody's ever had fractured ribs, I'll tell you, taking a breath, laughing, sneezing, it's horrible. Even taking those little bumps in the road, screaming pain. 
So I got the exosomes and within two weeks, the rib pain went away, completely gone. I took a repeat X-ray of my ankle, which was a fracture dislocation. You couldn't even see a fracture line. It's completely healed. And um, my clavicle uh, actually felt pretty good. I could lift my arm, I could do my surgeries. But here's, here's the other thing that was very interesting. Not only did I heal much faster after getting these exosomes, but my, my hair grew in, my skin got clear, and people, people were coming up to me and saying, Shelly, you look amazing. I mean, I, we know that you just got this horrible motorcycle accident, but what did you do? I mean, it's like, maybe you need more motorcycle accidents because you look great. So it, it turns out that the exosomes made me younger. So um, we'd actually already been doing some research with the exosomes at the time. And um, this really got me uh, thinking about how to restore the brain, how to turn around the aging process, how to turn around all these conditions that we find difficult to treat like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and other aging related degenerations. Can we use the exosomes and how do we get the exosomes into the brain? How do we get them to the structures that need to be repaired? Um, so I became very, very interested in that. Now it turns out that in the intervening years, the FDA has made it a requirement to, to go through uh, FDA licensing. So we're in the process of trying to work with the FDA right now to uh, bring this um, type of uh, therapy to uh, human use. We're, we're working with animal uh, models right now. The, the really exciting material um, has come from other laboratories as well. So the, um, the CHI group uh, from Albert Einstein um, has shown that if you take uh, exosomes from a young mouse and you inject it um, into a mouse that's aging, you can restore the um, proper age of the animal and actually extend their life. Um, so the, the ability to, um, provide exosomes to a spe specific part of the brain, in this case, the hypothalamus appears to reverse the aging process. Um, we've, um, we've, we've done some early experiments, um, with, uh, with animals, uh, to show that we could actually get the exosomes into the brain without having to do a surgery. And that's where we're at right now. So, um, in the uh, Albert Einstein uh, uh, mouse experiment, they actually had to do a surgery to inject uh, the exosomes directly into the brain. And what I've been doing in the last uh, more than 20 years is um, developing new technologies that can administer and target specific parts of the brain without actually having to do a surgery. So we can use, for example, focused ultrasound where uh, we can stimulate a particular part of the brain, including this hypothalamus, or in Alzheimer's disease, the part of the brain that relates to um, uh, memory, which is the uh, hippocampus, and in Parkinson's disease, the part of the brain that relates to movement, the substantia nigra, um, we can stimulate that with ultrasound. And we've been able to demonstrate that in humans, uh, we can stimulate those areas of the brain very selectively um, and um, we were now working on uh, giving um, exosomes intravenously and using the ultrasound as a pretreatment to um, encourage uh, the exosomes to go to a particular location in the brain without actually having to do an open surgery. I think that's where, that's where this field is going. And, um, and that's the research that I've been doing. And uh, some of this material has already been published and um, as I said, we're in the process of working with the FDA so we can actually um, work on resetting the biological clock of aging in humans uh, and also restoring the memory centers such as the hippocampus in Alzheimer's disease and restoring the movement areas of the brain in Parkinson's disease. So the, this is where um, uh, the research is going. It has to be done uh, as part of a formal research project uh, under uh, the FDA aegis. And, um, and that's what the process of doing. But we've been able to do all the basic work 
to show that this is feasible and practical uh, and can be done in a relatively non-invasive fashion. Dr. Jordan, you will be the chair of the upcoming Brain Health Summit. Will you provide us with a brief preview on the sessions you will be presenting on? So first of all, I think this is one of the most amazing brain summits that, that's been put together. Uh, some of the people speaking are um, folks that have made amazing contributions to the field. Uh, they're really at the cutting edge. And, f- and that they're not only, uh, some of them are collaborators and colleagues, but I have to say that many of them are heroes or heroines uh, for me uh, because of some of the outstanding work they've done. Um, so, um, for example, we have uh, Dr. Small uh, is uh, talking about um, healthy aging and how that relates to the brain. Um, Dr. Bullmore from England is talking about inflammation, how that affects the brain. Dr. Hassan is talking about how the gut and the brain uh, interact in such a way that um, problems can occur in uh, aging individuals and how that can be uh, improved. Dr. Nedegar is the, is the one who basically discovered the glymphatic system, which is the way that the brain is able to get rid of uh, toxins and how that becomes a problem uh, and how that can uh, be one of the causes of degenerative disease. Uh, Dr. Goodnow is an expert in uh, molecular work and uh, he's figured out ways of restoring the membranes in the brain using dietary uh, type of manipulation. Dr. Vernon Williams, a good friend, colleague of mine, is an amazing uh, fellow who um, has done a lot lot of work with brain trauma and how trauma can cause a progressive um, degeneration of the brain. Dr. Barkadarian is a neurosurgeon who's um, very interested in figuring out how the um, walking can fail as people get older and what can be done Uh, in terms of interventions to improve that, including possible surgical interventions. Uh, uh, Emily Amos is is, uh, gonna be talking about nutritional uh, aspects. Dr. Eslin, he's an amazing amazing man uh, at UCLA who's gonna talk about the spiritual uh, aspects of aging and the aging brain and how you can come to grips with that. Dr. Bredesen, uh, of course, has uh, been well known in terms of looking at multiple factors that can be reversed in um, stopping the degenerative process. Uh, Aubrey de Grey, um, he's obviously been an amazing figure uh, in the field of aging, and he's gonna talk about things that can be done to repair um, degeneration from the cellular level. And uh, Dr. Kuhn is uh, a a neuropsychologist who's an expert in advanced imaging techniques. And he's gonna talk about some of the new developments that are in the pipeline so that we can make early diagnoses of um, brain degeneration and therefore we can make decisions about interventions at an early stage when it'd be easier to treat. And that brings me to me. So I'm gonna first talk about the four M's of the aging brain. So memory, mood, mobility, and mojo. And uh, I'm going to be talking about how uh, families and individuals can really get an early handle on uh, something that might be going amiss uh, so that someone can get an early intervention. Uh, The second uh, speech is on uh, chronic brain infection. And we're gonna be talking about the bugs that live within us, including some bugs that lay dormant in our brains. And um, just like with our experience with syphilis in the 1800s and early 1900s, It turns out that there are multiple bugs, some of them similar to syphilis, that may be laying dormant in our brains that only come out when with aging, our immune system is no longer able to fight off these infections and control them, that things can come out of their dormant state and start to uh, cause problems with uh, brain function. And then what can be done about it? The last thing I'm gonna talk about is um, this very near and dear Uh, concept that I have about how to reset the biological clock of aging. So it turns out that aging is not just simply an accumulation of damage that occurs because of exposure in life, whether it's trauma or toxins, infections, all the bad things that happen to us. That's, That's part of what causes aging, but there's actually a clock 
that determines the various milestones in our life, including probably when we age and when we die. Once we can identify where this clock is, we can try to reprogram it. So the very last talk of the summit is to look at some of the concepts that relate to this biological clock and what we can do to reset it so that perhaps aging and dying is not necessarily the disabling inevitability that it appears to be now, that there may be ways of resetting the biological clock so that we can restore health, not only to our bodies, but to the different parts of the brain that may be failing. Thank you so much, Dr. Jordan, for being with us today, for sharing your expertise. And we are all very excited for the upcoming Brain Health Summit taking place on June 26th and the 27th. Thank you. Well, I'm very excited to be a part of this. Um, it's been uh, an amazing um, opportunity that A4M has uh, granted me and uh, to basically have a, a clean slate to go after all the brightest and sharpest and most amazing people in this space that I could think of. And we've been so fortunate in getting um, uh, basically 100% of the people we wanted on this program. They're all here. They're all great speakers. They're all people um, that are um, front runners in their areas. And I think it's going to be amazing for the uh, participants in this summit uh, to really learn about all the, the new things that are happening in, um, in brain, uh, brain work, and how we can uh, apply these things over the coming years to turn around some of these degenerative conditions that we previously thought were unassailable, like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Thank you. And thank you to all of our listeners. Until next time.